Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles. Today we're going to be watching a tier 9, although there are some tier 8 ships involved, ranked battle here on the crash zone alpha map. It's a domination battle, six ships per team, and the star of today's show is RRZ464, yes Z not Z, this is a North American server battle, he is a North American player. In the tier 9 premium, technically I suppose promotional, I'll explain the difference in a moment, tier 9 US Navy battleship, the USS Georgia. So what's the difference between a premium ship and a promotional ship? Well, we're really kind of splitting hairs here, but the only way to get the USS Georgia, I believe it became available in 2019, was to complete a promotional campaign. Since then, it has not been available, although I think they do keep tossing it out for sale in an Admiral pack, which means that if you did get it from an Admiral pack, then it is a premium ship. But even if you got it as part of the original promotion, it's now just a premium ship. Again, we're kind of splitting hairs, but there is a technical difference. And if I didn't mention the difference, the comment section would just be full of actually Jingles comments. So, I mean, it's going to be anyway, because I'm going to do something wrong at some point during the course of this video. But let's try to minimise the number of opportunities that people have. <laughs> so, anyway. Ranked battle. Six ships per side, which means you probably shouldn't be expecting massive amounts of damage done, because there are only six ships worth of hit points to be farmed. Even if all of those ships had a repair party and had the opportunity to use it, it does place a hard cap on the maximum possible amount of damage that you can expect any one ship to do in a ranked battle. The team have split up, and it's an uneven split with only two ships heading down to the south in the direction of Cap Circle Alpha. The majority, four of the team, are heading east to Cap Circle Charlie. This isn't a terrible tactic because it means they should be able to take Cap Circle Charlie relatively easily. And at the very least, even if they can't flip Cap Circle Alpha, they will be able to contest it. Although the friendly Jutland down in Alpha does appear to be doing a pretty good job of taking it. Okay, RRZ has been spotted. Unsurprising, the Georgia's stealth is fantastic. It's the enemy Cossack. Now that's not great news for the Benson, who has been spotted by the Cossack. Unsurprisingly, both destroyers are smoking up. The Benson's already gotten his torpedoes away, but, well, you can run faster than the Benson torpedoes. Now, not all smoke screens are equal. The Benson has American smoke, which takes a long time to deploy, so it covers a huge area, and it lasts a long time. The Cossack has British smoke, which lasts less than a minute, but he does get a lot of charges and a very, very fast reload on his smoke, but it means that the Cossack cannot afford to hang around. The other thing about the Cossack's Hydro, which he's almost certainly using since he's been forced to smoke up, is that it doesn't have great range, but it does last a very long time. And those Benson torpedoes seem to have passed close enough to the Cossack's smoke that he's probably detected them, which means anybody on the Cossack's team is going to have lots and lots of advance notice that those torpedoes are on the way, and they've all run out of steam and have failed to hit anything. The Benson left his smoke screen, presumably because he didn't want to be hanging around inside the smoke screen with potential Cossack torpedoes incoming, which meant that the Cossack was able to finish flipping Cap Circle Charlie. However, the friendly Siegfried has popped his Hydro, which has extremely long range, so all of those torpedoes were spotted nice and early. And since the Cossack only has one torpedo launcher, and the enemy Fletcher has been spotted down at the south, that means there is no longer a torpedo threat. At least not until the Cossack can reload his torpedoes, and he's definitely still hanging around there. You can see his smoke has expired. The Benson slips back into the cap circle. There's the Cossack again. So RRZ had focused his secondaries on the Jean Bart down to the south, but the second the Cossack popped up, he focused the secondaries on him instead. Now he's changed his mind, and he's gone back to the Jean Bart because the Cossack with its extremely quick reload on its short duration smokescreen, has once again gone undetected. Here you can see the various different skills that RRZ has acted. He's definitely gone for a secondary spec on his Georgia, which is not a terrible idea, because the Georgia's secondaries are fantastic. They have extremely good range, good accuracy, and a fast rate of fire. Cossack's torpedoes are back up, but again, with the Siegfried's Hydro running, they are coming as no surprise to anybody, and the Cossack is now in range of the Siegfried's Hydro. So, secondaries back to the Cossack. To 
No, still focused on the Jean Bart. No, there we go. Secondary is now back on the Cossack. Here's the problem. I mean, obviously the Cossack needs to die, cannot be allowed to escape. But the further that RRZ and the Siegfried drive forward into the enemy like this, and this is why he's focusing his guns on the Jean Bart, the Jean Bart needs to die. Because the further forward they move, the bigger a broadside target you're giving to either the Alaska and the Tirpitz or the Jean Bart. So he needs to either sink the Jean Bart or force it back into cover behind that island where it can't actually shoot at him and then he can turn and angle against the Alaska and the Tirpitz. And that is basically what's happening. And oh, lovely hit on the Jean Bart. Finished off by the fires that were already set by the secondaries. Right, the Cossack is back up. Secondary is now focused on the Cossack. And despite the fact that his very good engine boost is running, he is slowing down here because he doesn't want to get within torpedo range of the Tirpitz. More torpedoes going past, and unfortunately the Pommen who was with him has died to flooding. He is now public enemy number one. Secondary still focused on the Cossack. The Cossack goes down. Now the Tirpitz and the Alaska. Choice of targets here for his 457mm guns. The Alaska as a cruiser is obviously going to be a softer target, but the Alaska seems to realise this and has started angling in. The Tirpitz, however, clearly doesn't have time for any of that angling shit and is showing a beautiful broadside, although he does have turtleback armour, which is probably going to prevent him from taking any citadels, but it is not going to prevent him from taking massive chunks of armour-piercing damage. Both RRZ and the Tirpitz now focus on their secondaries on each other, and the Tirpitz' secondaries are pretty badass too. The biggest concern right now, however, is the Alaska, who is driving forward at full speed. And again, the more you drive in between these two enemy ships, at some point you're going to be giving broadside to one of them. And the Tirpitz does have bigger guns than the Alaska, so he's angling against the Tirpitz, but... Uh, Hang on a second, I need to take control of the camera. That Alaska doesn't even have his guns point, he doesn't. <laughs> okay, fine. In what I can only describe as a sudden and fatal rush of shit to the brain from the Alaska captain, he committed to a drive-by on the Georgia, didn't shoot the Georgia, <laughs> instead sailed straight into a torpedo crossfire, who would have seen that one coming, which not only allowed RRZ to survive, although he's definitely going to want to use that uh, damage control to put those two fires out the second it comes off cooldown, and there it is, but also allowed RRZ to continue angling against and sink the Tirpitz. Okay, we'll, we'll take it. <laughs> so they've taken Charlie. He's healing up, and they can now turn their attention to the two surviving enemy ships, the Prince Ruprecht over there, who is inside shooting range, and the Fletcher. There's a lot of distance to cover, but that isn't a problem for the Georgia because it's an extremely fast ship. Its base speed is not far short of 35 knots, which is the standard speed for most destroyers at this tier. And with its engine boost running, well, just look at the speed creeping up there. 38.6, seven. As long as he doesn't use the rudder, the Georgia, with its engine boost running, will almost be capable of speeds of 40 knots. Shot out against the Prince Ruprecht, and he's rapidly closing the distance. The enemy Fletcher is likely to be a significant problem here. The Tirpitz is flipping cap circle Charlie, and the Jutland is also moving into the cap circle as well. And in that position, the Tirpitz is able to angle against the Prince Ruprecht, but he's also being farmed by the Fletcher. The Fletcher has just flipped cap circle, Alpha, and the Tirpitz has just gone down, finished off by the Prince Ruprecht secondaries. The problem that the Prince Ruprecht is having is that while the Georgia's 457mm guns cannot overmatch 32mm of armour, for that you need 18-inch guns of the same calibre as the Masashi, Yamato, or better, the Prince Ruprecht does not have 32mm of bow plating, it only has 27 and in his haste to get away from the threat posed by the Jutland down to the south, he sailed close enough to the Georgia here that RRZ was easily able to punch through what armour he did have. That just leaves the Fletcher, who has flipped cap circle Alpha and has not been seen for some time. So, ah, there he is. He's gonna try to finish off the Jutland. That does kind of make sense, because the Jutland is the only really significant threat to the Fletcher at the moment. 
However, despite the fact that the Jutland started this fight on significantly lower health, it is entirely capable of putting up a fight. The Fletcher seemed to stop shooting there, which probably means he's launched torpedoes, which is going to give the Jutland a bit more breathing space to inflict as much damage on that Fletcher as he possibly can before the Fletcher probably wins this gunfight. You know what, the Jutland's actually done a really good job there. The Fletcher won the fight. I mean, he started with way more health, so I'd have been very surprised if he'd lost that fight. But he took way more damage finishing off that Jutland than he could possibly afford. Now, is the Fletcher going to flip Bravo? He really does need to, and he is doing that. The reason he needs to do it is because there's nine and a half minutes of this game left, and he's behind on points. It's going to be very difficult for the Fletcher to win, but not impossible. Because with the Jutland dead, he can now flip Bravo safely. He already has control of Alpha, and with nine and a half minutes of the battle left, time is on his side. And he also has very, very dangerous torpedoes. So if he were to torpedo and sink either RRZ here in the Georgia, who doesn't have Hydro, or the Siegfried, who does have Hydro and would be a more difficult torpedo target, he could then make a run for the cap circle at Charlie. He would still have to avoid being detected, but he's in the destroyer. That's not difficult. Recognising the chance that the Fletcher has, the team are actually deploying without being told. Oh, here come the torpedoes. Oh, he's going to take one. Yep, that was a lot of damage with just one Fletcher torpedo. The team, however, are deploying to cover any eventuality, with the Benson heading west in order to sneak into Cap Circle Alpha and flip it, or at the very least contest it from the north and both RRZ and the Siegfried moving to flip Bravo. Notice that the Fletcher is no longer spotting RRZ, which gives us some indication of the way that the Benson might have gone. He's either headed straight northeast and is now on the other side of that island, or he's trying to hook around, because he has the time to do it, through Cap Circle Alpha. And that could be really bad news for the friendly Benson, because he can't afford to be spotted either. He is also pretty much a one-shot kill. And killing the Benson would also buy the Fletcher more time. Oh, he is on the other side of the island. That is really bad news for the Benson. Uh, they could kill each other. It's just a question of who sees the other one first. The Benson's trying to smoke up. The Fletcher has shots out. And he's got the Benson. The Fletcher now has options. What he needs to do now is haul ass up to the northeast while dropping smoke to conceal him from RRZ's Georgia and dropping torpedoes behind him because with the engine boost running, the Georgia can easily outrun a Fletcher. And I don't know if the Fletcher's smoke was on cooldown or if his torpedoes were on cooldown or both, but he doesn't do any of that. Well, he does. He sees the Georgia, shits his pants and pops his smoke, but it's a day late and a dollar short and RRZ racks up his fifth kill in ranked battle, where there are only six enemy ships to begin with, more than 2,000 base experience, and nearly 148,000 damage. Clearly he was just slacking, he should have killed the Alaska as well. <laughs> Either way, uh, well done. Entertaining match, very well played. Congratulations on the result, and I hope you all enjoyed watching it because that is it for today. As always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.